So for the six human needs marketers can really like take advantage of this in like different ways for each um, of the needs. So certainly security, I thought about like locking contracts for like um, people do it for like loans, like the interest rate's not gonna change. So they're really secure in how much they're gonna be paying back. Um, so it's not like they're worrying about that uncertainty of what's going to happen like it's secure and the same with insurance like that's really a security thing that they know that something's gonna always be there to fall back on and the uncertainty and variety i was thinking like marketers could really take advantage of this you know showing people's like mundane lives and then like you know you should get out and travel you should like something jump on a plane yeah. and go something some, yeah something different um Belonging and love. Um, yeah, I don't really know for this one. <laughs> but we were thinking for our growth and contribution, we kind of link these two together from maybe like a college, you know, showing that you, you can really develop in your life and grow and extend yourself while studying. You know, here at Weber, like we go to classes and we learn different things, and you're really growing as a person, really forming your opinions, and then in the end, to reach that part where you're contributing to society, contributing to a business, like you're actually making a difference, you're not just being like a dull member of society. Um, belonging and love. Marketers actually use this a lot, you know, like you think of like the Coca-Cola ads and they're like all with your friends and stuff like that. So they're really like tapping into that psyche of like, you need to be with your friends and you know, part of a group, um, and significance and independence. <laughs> Once again, can kind of somewhat link into the fashion industry where people are like, you know, wanting to stand out and be different, so that's something significant to them. And then, what really gives humans a drive to accomplish a goal? That was more like the, the pain pleasure principle. So, of course, people would do more to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. But if you can associate yourself with doing something that's pleasurable, then people are more likely to be doing stuff like that. Yeah. And I think people who like want to avoid pain more because the discomfort of like getting pain, or, like saying you're getting like a bad grade, like that emotion that like, goes along with that, like knowing that you failed, is a lot more than like the temporary of like oh I got a good grade and then you kind of move on. Like I feel like the negative, the negativity bias or whatever it's called. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, can humans have goals that conflict with one another? So, one could be like, say somebody wants to lose weight, but then they also want to get better grades. So, if you want to get better grades, you need to have more time studying, of course. And yeah. then, if you want to lose weight, you need to put more time into the gym or like your diet and stuff like that, which would both consume a lot of time. Yeah. So, and those would conflict. And I thought uh, another one could be like going with that time thing is wanting to do really well in your job. And you know, those people like on Wall Street and that's like their whole lives, they're not coming home till like 9, 10 o'clock at night and they leave early in the morning. But then they were like, oh, but I really want to spend more time with my family. Like that's two very conflicting things and you know, it's a balance. Um, and another thing I thought was like being social, like I want to spend more time with my friends and stuff. But then you could be like, I also don't want to drink as much. And then, yeah. you know, the way society is now, like that's a hard thing to do. <laughs>